Hi, this is Keith Bryant, the first of the Keith Bryant shows at Apex 2019, and I'm here with Sherry Stepp from Kaizen. Welcome, Sherry. Um, let's, let's start with uh, you telling us about the great promotion that you have, and then we'll go into the new product that you have here. Okay. Um, we're growing, obviously. Kaizen is um, growing quite a bit. I was recently promoted to Global Marketing Manager, which is means that I get to take care of Kaizen's marketing all over the world. As you know, we have a location, our headquarters is in Nashville. We have a location in um, Penang, Malaysia, Shanghai, China, and Alter, Belgium. So I get to um, make sure that we're putting our best face forward all over. Okay, so that, that allows you to basically have a, a, let's say, a unified global face. Huh? Exactly. Okay. And, and after 22 years uh, with the company, it's um, kind of exciting to be able to, to, to continue to do what I've been doing for a while. Good. And do you get to travel more or are you still pretty much I'm based? Still pretty much the same amount of travel, but um, it's, it's kind of exciting to be able, I, I will definitely have to go to our locations a lot more often. Yeah, and get more involved in the overseas trade shows as well, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, that'll be fun. and It'll be nice to see you in different places around the world. Okay, so tell us about the new product. We are introducing at the show a product that has been under development for over two and a half years. Um, we, the research and development, with the listening to our customers and, and um, the people in the field, our salespeople about things that were missing or, or things that could be made better. And with the ever evolving electronics industry where things are getting smaller and smaller and lower, you know, the lower standoffs and the finer pitch, um, it, provide some challenges for those of us in the cleaning industry on how to get underneath and, and get those completely clean. So through the two and a half years, our research and development team, our chemists have been, been working, we've done field trials and it's been extensively tested in the field, lots of compatibility work. And so we're introducing it here at the show and it's Aquinox A4727. So, wow, that's a mouthful in itself. Well, it's, you know, okay. the way they're named. Um, a lot of the problems that I've seen related to cleaning isn't so much the cleaning material getting underneath the components, it's getting it out afterwards. Exactly. So is, is there any secret with this stuff or well, is it down to the machines and operators and everything else? At some point it, it does become a part of the, the mechanical energy to push it out, but um, DI water and its surface tension is a lot higher than our chemistry. It's designed to get in underneath the, the components. It's designed to um, clean under the BGAs and, and things of that nature. And then, again, it does take a little bit of mechanical energy to, to get it all rinsed back out again. And how, do, how does it stand up with the, let, let's call them the, the global cleaning um, specifications of uh, uh, various bits that are around the world with IPC and we and Roche and all the rest of the stuff. It's it's incredibly uh, environmentally friendly by chemical standards. Um, it's the the Rojas and the we and all that. It's uh, the GHS uh, parts of it are are extremely good. The SDS is real clean. Um, okay. Don't have any issues shipping it anywhere in the world. Ah, great. And two and a half years is a long time to develop a product. So. Uh, I, I'm sure you've uh, done all the homework and all the testing and you're going to have something that's uh, going to be around for a, a, a good long time and something you can market around the world. Huh? Oh, absolutely. You know, our Aquinox product line is, is award winning. I mean, we've had several products that have just been tried and true. Um, our Aquinox A4625 is, has, is, you know, still a really strong product. There's nothing wrong with it. There's, you know, if it's working, it's working. Um, but our Aquinox product line is just even better and stronger with this addition to the uh, with the 4727. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for coming in and sharing that with us. Thank and, you for having uh, me. Have a good show, and hopefully we'll be able to interview you somewhere else around the world later on in the year. I'll see you in Nuremberg. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Sherry.
Hi, this is Keith Bryant, and my second guest on the first day of Apex is David Bergman from IPC, and we're going to talk about the CFX standard and also the CFX line, which is running upstairs here at the show. So, welcome, David. Thanks, Keith. Appreciate the opportunity to talk about the standard, and I guess the first big news is that the standard is approved and uh, been voted on, so the industry has approved it. We are preparing it for final release, and uh, the committee will start looking at uh, the upgrades. One version, so we have 1.0 that's out, and uh, they will turn their focus in development for 1.1, 1.2. And so the, the exciting part is that you know, CFX is the foundation, for industry 4.0, and so the house is ready to be built now that the foundation's in place. Yeah, and it hasn't taken you very long in standards terms to get the good solid foundation down, so that's a, a good thing to hear as well. Done in a very different way with uh, online software development and GitHub, and I learned a lot about how uh, software tools get developed, so it's very fascinating. So. Uh, for this show, then into as we're as we're writing it, we're trying to demonstrate it, as well as uh, encourage people to look at it and adopt. And so uh, we were uh, doing a demonstration. We have both the virtual demonstration, like we had Apex last year. There's 33 companies and probably 60 machines, uh, which is a significant increase over 2018. And then the committee wasn't satisfied with that. They want to push the envelope as well. So we have two full manufacturing lines. Uh, one is running complete CFX messages. And the second line is running a combination of two IPC standards. One is the CFX. The other is the IPC Hermes standard, 9852. And uh, running messages from both of those standards in that line. So uh, that is... Uh, on the show floor as well, and we learned a lot about how to try and build a manufacturing line. It's not as easy as it looks on TV. <laughs> no, um, I've seen a, a lot of production lines over the years at a lot of exhibitions to, to demonstrate various things, and uh, sometimes they were okay, uh, and a lot of times, yeah, even towards the end of the first day, people are still struggling to get it right. So, so if, we'll if you guys are there and have it going well, then it's good, and you know, two lines is, twice the problems in terms of equipment and um, getting people to, to, to liaise together. Um, and how are you seeing it working out with the two different standards? So the companies that have been involved are very, uh, uh, have strong desire to have those work together. So uh, we've been pleased so far to the, w the way that the, the two uh, standards fit. Uh, my goal at this point in time, in addition to uh, building awareness, is collecting logos from companies that want to say, you know, we want to see our, either our customers implement this or promote that their company is implementing CFX standards. We will be posting letters of commitment on the CFX webpage. Uh, and then I'll start to talk to other organizations uh, in Japan about you know, whether we can uh, talk and make presentations on CFX to these organizations as well. Yeah, it would be great to be able to, to get this out into Asia so that we end up with one global standard. We don't have the, the Betamax VHS issues that Correct. Uh, a Correct. few other standards have had. So, yeah, I know you've been to Japan already and you're starting to, to work with those guys. And, you know, for, as a, just a, an, a, a straight comment from somebody with a lot of time in the industry, it's great to actually see this. You know, Industry 4.0 has been talked about for a few years now. I've done presentations on Smart Factory and that kind of stuff for, I think, about three years myself. And it's good to see that standards and things are actually coming along to not only support this, but to put in a framework so that everybody can basically hang their stuff on it and it all hangs together. The next two years should be really exciting as the 4.0 starts to become real. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're getting a lot of... Uh, serious customers talking about it now. You know, we, we had people at, let's say, the high level within the organizations uh, interested in it because they saw it as a chance to increase yield and make all the savings, but you know, I, I'm now talking to more and more of the technologists, and these are the guys who are going to make the thing happen. You know, 
because at the end of the day, you know, with the, the greatest respect to everybody else, it's the engineers that uh, get on board and get behind something and then it goes somewhere. So, yeah, it's, uh, say, a very exciting time. So there is, there is a, um, an interesting opportunity that, that companies are, are, are hopefully going to start putting resources to, and this is the issue of legacy equipment. Uh, being able to upgrade uh, your your older machine to be able to communicate in the standard formats. Uh, the recommendations from the committee is to try and do that as native to the machine language as possible. Uh, and if that's not possible through software upgrades, uh, I, I believe there will there are coming to market, and I I know that there are other companies working on uh, some kind of uh, bolt-on or, or attached module that will enable people to work with machines that uh, are still providing value to their companies but may not be the, you know, the, the brand new yeah. ones. Yeah, that's the important thing and then it's really going to take off yep. because nobody wants to put in, let's, let, let's be polite and call it a CFX line where they have to buy brand new equipment For from everything. maybe guys who are not their preferred vendors or at least vendors that they don't have equipment in their factory already. Um, and yeah, if, if they can basically bolt something on to the uh, existing equipment and get it to talk to the new equipment and the other equipment and also a management information system, then yeah, then it's really going to fly. Very good. Well, it's good to be able to talk to you about it today. Yeah, thank you very much for your time. And, uh, Thanks, Keith. Look, look forward to uh, chatting to you later in the year when things have moved forward again. Be happy to. Looking forward to it. All right. Thanks for your time. Hi, this is Keith Bryant, day one of Apex 2019, and I'm here with Bill Cardozo from Creative Electron, and we're going to talk about the realities of the two CFX lines that are running upstairs here at the show, demonstrating, well, with one line demonstrating CFX, and the other one demonstrating CFX and Hermes connectivity, and I think Bill has equipment up there, so he's ideally placed to tell us uh, how much fun it was to set it up, how easy it is for everything to talk to each other, and um, whether CFX is good or bad. So, over to you, Bill. Thanks, Keith. Well, it was a piece of cake, you know? I mean, how hard can it be to set up an SMT line in a couple of days, right? Um, I think the, uh, it was a very ambitious goal uh, to set up not one, but two uh, SMT lines uh, in an environment uh, such as a trade show. Uh, but I think the uh, objective uh, is to really show uh, the CFX uh, connectivity and how you know these machines can talk together and uh, provide some extra level of uh, information uh, to uh, to our customers, uh, which is something I know you've been doing for quite a while, right? Getting machines to talk to each other and and to augment the level of information that can be given to uh, to operators and, uh, and yep, customers. Yeah, that's you know, it, for for a lot of people, it's it's the way forward. But not only the communication between the machines, but the machines being able to send that data back to a, a, a central source Correct. so a person can have a control. And I guess that's probably the next step with the CFX protocols. Yeah, that's the, uh, I think that's the natural evolution of uh, this uh, communication protocol. And I think what's, what's exciting about this APEX is, um, you know, really see uh, the inspection Right, which is your background as well. Inspection graduating from being a necessary evil to being an incredible source of data and eventually information to the line, right? So I think we've, as a community, we're reaching critical mass where enough people in the right places are realizing that's the way to go, that's actually progressing and happening. So it's exciting to see and, and being yeah. there. I know exactly what you mean, especially with offline equipment. You know, yeah. the, the the number of times in sort of 15, 20 years ago, you had conversations with people of, you know, I don't need any extra inspection because yeah. you know we, we make things that are good. They're perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> now we, we've got people, I guess, looking for even higher yields, looking for reducing even costs, and yeah. now a, a lot of reality has come back for inline and offline. Quit, offline. So. Exactly. Yeah. There's merit for both inline and, and, and offline 
inspection uh, in communication uh, with the line. So I think it's very powerful that people are realizing that your inspection instrumentation is, you know, the, the, the set of equipments are the source of all data for, for your line. Yeah, and, uh, you know, the, the next battle we're going to have with people is um, sort of conversations that I'm having with some people in Asia already is, yeah, they, they want uh, a factory where they don't need to turn the lights on because there aren't any people and AI is going to control everything. everything. Uh, and we, we don't need people, we don't need operators, we don't need inspectors, we don't need anything. The machines are going to do everything that they, do, that they need to do. And if the machines need help, then we're going to have other machines to control what the machines do. Yeah. Now, realistically, how long do you think we are from that be a reality? Okay, uh, it, it's interesting <laughs> to get questions from the interviewee, but yeah, in, in my view, um, realistically, never. Never? No, oh, yeah. the, the, the process is too complex. I think we will have better informed people, and we will have people able to make better decisions, but until we can get a, a, a huge amount of data from the lines, um, you still need a, a, a skilled engineer. Got you. you know, when, when I started a long time ago selling solder paste, I was trained by an old guy who would, he actually picked up the paste, put it in his fingers and sniffed it. Oh, wow. And, and the, the theory behind doing that was he could tell if there were enough volatiles left in the paste by the wow. smell. Wow. Did he eat it? No, he, no, no, thankfully well, he didn't good. eat it yeah. because we were in the days of tin lead. So <laughs> it probably wasn't a wide thing. But, you know, you still need that, that level of engineer to make the decisions. You know, until we have That's another 15 yeah. or 20 sensors on a on a printer yeah. that tell us all the stuff we need to about is the paste wet enough, is there enough paste, are the apertures blocked on the stencil, you know, is the, is the squeegee working properly, yeah. you know, we, we have 70% of the faults coming out of printing and it's the dumbest machine on the line. Yeah. You know, you look at how pick and places move forward and how, exactly. all, you know, even you know, X-ray and the rest yeah. of your kit has moved forward. Yeah. And, you know, we still have a stencil, a squeegee, and yeah. it moves backwards and forwards. Yeah. And so you think that in the evolution towards an artificial intelligence run line or whatever that might happen, you will have augmented intelligence. So all the sensors and all these, if you will, algorithms helping operators run the line more efficiently and yeah and, and yeah that, 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 that's the view that I see it is we're still going to need lights and we're still going to need a, a, a high level of skilled let's call it operational line manager yeah. or whatever and maybe you can have one person controlling two lines if they're making the same product all the time but you know, you still need that human interface somewhere it's maybe going to be higher up higher the food up chain up, but yeah. I hope it's still going to be there yeah, and I think that's, going back to CFX, that's where these protocols help give those individuals the information they need so they can act appropriately, right? Yeah. Uh, to bring those lines back to operation when they break. Yep. Because they break, right? Oh, we yeah. know they do. That's right. Yeah. And occasionally they go a little bit wild, and all of that helps us because uh, still they need then our brains to come in and fix the stuff. Fix the things, so. yeah. So I'm not worrying about the, 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 the time that I'm here, and I don't think, you know, as, as a young guy, you need to be worrying All about right. artificial intelligence replacing you. So I think we'll be okay. We'll be okay. Good. I'm glad you hear that. All right. Thank you very much for your time. It's always it's a pleasure to chat with you. Thanks, Keith.